And so yesterday was the um, Tenants' Rights Ordinance Citizen Input Hearing. Um, we uh, are going to talk a little bit about it, um, and then we're going to put more of it online. Uh, but Tom is going to talk uh, more about that. So please, Tom. Yes, so just as a refresher, the Housing Rights Certification Ordinance is a proposed law for that's currently going through City Council. It was drafted largely by Watch CDC. It was brought forward uh, to the City Council after like a year of watch advocacy by Jonathan Paz uh, last earlier this month, alongside Colleen Bradley MacArthur and George Darcy. And since then, it had, and what this law does is that it requires that anytime someone starts a lease and 30 days prior to anyone, before anyone is evicted from their home, whether it's an owner occupied home being foreclosed upon or uh, being evicted from your rental, uh, it is required that either the foreclosing agent or your landlord provides you with a one page fact sheet, which lists all your rights and resources that are available to you. Um, yeah, and this list of rights and resources is provided by the city, the city and local nonprofits. So no effort on the part of the landlord beyond just handing them these, this piece of paper. Uh, and there was a massive amount of attendance at the citizen input hearing. Um, the government center auditorium was genuinely overflowing. I was stuck outside for half of it, uh, and you can watch it online both on WACAC's government meetings page, as well as on our YouTube channel under the live streams. Uh, but you see there were a lot of people and a lot of people there who were there to talk about it. A lot of people in favor of the ordinance and also a lot of people opposed who are pretty much entirely landlords. And also interestingly, all the people against didn't really seem to understand what this law did. Um, there were a lot of complaints about how this law is implementing rent control uh, this tenant's rights certification ordinance has nothing to do with rent control. There was a lot of worries about how this ordinance would delay evictions or enable the non-payment of rent by tenants. There was one dude who he spent like his full, fi full five minutes of talking, talking about how it's outrageous that the city council would be allowed to enforce the non-payment of rent and force landlords to provide rental housing for free. Um, that simply is not true. The reason that's seemed outrageous is because it was entirely fabricated and made up. Um, there was also um, one person who was complaining about, or multiple people who were complaining about how the local government has no business getting in to the, like getting in the way of the tenant landlord relationship, which is also kind of ridiculous. The entire premise of a tenant landlord relationship is that it is a legal document which is bound and enforced by our legal system and government. Uh, but regardless, it was largely just a lot of misinformation on that side. I didn't hear a lot of genuine arguments that were against it beyond just like, I guess there were a few people who were like very simply like, I don't wanna go through the eviction process. I wanna be able to kick someone out. Um, yeah. Um, I think two of the big comments that really just like weren't very pleasant was um, like beyond just like the factual inaccuracies, I'm sorry, this is just going to be me dishing on like the anti-ordinance folks, but this generally is just like such a bare minimum ordinance. Um, but then everyone was worried about like, you know, I don't want to deal with renters who don't pay rent and being forced to keep them. So it should be clarified. The purpose of this law is that prior to eviction, tenants will be handed this one page fact sheet that lists their rights and resources. So that way they know who to reach out to. So that way they can get rental assistance from organizations such as WAP CDC who have the money to provide rental assistance so that these renters can make their rent rental payments and avoid the eviction process altogether. This ordinance is how tenants pay their rent. This is how landlords get their money is if this ordinance is passed, you know that your tenant will have access to all the resources available to them so that they can pay their rent. This is like the primary focus of this law. This law is not something that will enable the non-payment of rent. It is something that will put money that is avail currently available, just people don't know about it, into the pockets of renters so that they can pay their landlord so that way they can continue renting 
and not have to be evicted. I thought, yeah, I thought that was particularly hilarious. Like so many comments about, well, how am I going to pay my mortgage? This notification is how you pay your mortgage. It is how you acquire the money to pay the mortgage. The money that the renter gets resources to pay your mortgage. And also I thought it was, I thought it was completely hilarious how transparent a few of them were saying that the renter paid their entire mortgage. And so literally just spelling out how much of a leech they are to the renter, paying the mortgage, keeping all of the equity uh, while the renter gets none. Yeah, there was a total lack of self-awareness and just like how power is balanced between a landlord and tenant. There was that sort of discussion where they were complaining about, they were saying how they, they were financing a rent, a renter's living as if the renter wasn't paying for their mortgage. Um, there was also one really tone deaf dude who was saying, yeah, homelessness is bad, but bankruptcy is worse, which is an insane statement to say. Like it is, if you have to choose between losing the only home you live in as a renter who gets evicted or losing a second home off to the side, that is like just, you know, an extra income source for you losing the home you live in is worse. Yeah. Like if you lose an income source, there are always ways to get other jobs, get money. If you lose your house and become homeless, that is like an infinitely horrible hole to get out of. And I forget who brought it up in the meeting, but it's important to bring up. Yeah. Like, you know, the average cost once someone becomes chronically homeless to like get out of that rut or even just like maintain that the cost to the, to the city and local in state and federal governments is like $40,000 per person because it is expensive to be homeless. It does horrible damage to your health. That requires, uh, that requires healthcare uh, and hospital visit requires a lot of policing because the way we deal with unhoused people is fucked up in this uh, country. Um, like by far, <laughs> there are a few things worse than becoming homeless. Like it is genuinely a very difficult thing to deal with. Um, much more difficult than, you know, losing a second home, you know. Um, and then also there was just a bunch of, you know, um, racial undertones, we shall say, um, landlords being, you know, they're the f discriminatory toward uh, James, if you want to say something. The, the first person who got up there was saying, why can't we just teach everyone English? Mm -hmm. That's how it started. I thought, I thought that was hilarious because Watch has a bunch of like, ESL uh, classes like why can't you just do the thing you already do <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah if only they had a one-page fact sheet that told them where they could learn English not that that should be a prerequisite to them deserving housing but like <laughs> if only there was a one-page fact sheet that they were provided that taught them where to learn their English that was also this thing with this other landlord who came up who was, who was saying we don't need this ordinance because there are already so many resources out there to help tenants. And she listed off like more organizations than I knew about, um, like local and statewide rental uh, assistance organizations. I'm like, man, I've been advocating this for this law forever and I haven't heard of half these organizations. You know, it would be really cool if we put all these organizations on a single fact sheet and provided them to every renter so that way they knew they had access to these. Um, like, because that was the main thing. Like, all of the land, well, almost all the landlords who got up and spoke against this ordinance, they wanted what this ordinance provided. They just genuinely, none of them bothered. Very few of them bothered to read what the ordinance did. Um, yeah, and some, and some, yeah, some were very transparent about it. They, some were very transparent that, you know, this is just they didn't want to put any more power in the hands of renters, even if it meant paying their mortgage. It, they would prefer to deal with the hardships of having to pay their mortgage than then ever once putting a little bit more power in the hands of renters or even the illusion of power because this isn't really power at all this is just literally information the mm -hmm. the 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 chance that it might because they don't they didn't even understand what it was the chance that it might put a little more power in the hands of renters that was enough for them they, they would rather they would rather go bankrupt mm -hmm. Yeah, the facts of the matter didn't um, matter. These people were complaining about rent control. This could have been an ordinance to implement rent control <laughs> in the city of Waltham, and it would have been the same exact response. Yeah. Um, it would have been cool the, if it was. The actual material realities of this ordinance did not matter to them. It was just like, oh, renters may be being informed of their current rights. That tips the power balance? No. It's basically, well, basically we're giving out rent for free. 
there there were at least a couple landlords out of the bunch that were saying this is like such a nothing ordinance how are you all not how are you all up in arms about it which was fascinating to see also and mm -hmm. but but on the subject of like the power imbalance that these people take for granted and were very had very unobvious display like how ignorant they were to it like they're so used to having their voices centered that they didn't even I've been to a fair amount of public input sessions and this one had was by far the most attended and mm -hmm. it's the only one I've seen where they had so many people that they had like a tally of the people in attendance mm -hmm. before even most of the testimony was done and the way that it played out was basically like an entire family reunion of all these landlords filing into the auditorium to get counted and then filing out and then all the people who had actual experience dealing with the landlords having to wait to then give their testimony after that which is go, sort of tells a lot about how city government operates and when this gets filed probably with prejudice well that's probably gonna be the conclusion of it i don't know is that what you think is gonna happen if I had to guess, yeah. What do you think? That's about? what they're going to be pushing to do. I genuinely have no idea. I I am vaguely hopeful. Um, I if I were to if I were to guess, it would be that this will pass because it's such a small ask, and then it will prevent any upward mobility of anything else. Anything else is going to be shut down because oh, we already did the tenants' rights thing. Like like we we hear you. We you know here's what here's how to prove that you know. We care about this issue, but this other issue is one that actually puts hands, uh, puts power in the hands of uh, uh, renters and marginalized groups. That's not going to happen. That will never happen. That is my guess. I think it's. I think it will at least go to a vote. I don't know how it will go. I think it will at least go to a vote, just because, like, even barring the landlords and their families, like filing and filing out, it still might have been the most attended like public input session I've ever seen uh mm, just absolutely like this is an incredibly like well publicized and well reached um like ordinance i feel like it's very like broadly communicated like how bare bones and simple and like reasonable this ordinance is uh and i think the city councilors do kind of know that and beyond like the small class of landlords in in waltham who are like you know reactionary like knee-jerk against any semblance of like tenants having rights um i i feel like literally every other person in the city would be like oh this is kind of reason why it may like turn them sour that's just me like being optimistic though maybe that's not actually how people work but yeah i mean if they filed it i mean i wouldn't be super surprised at all um i, was, I would say i am surprised at how many people are there um and especially the opposition uh mm -hmm. maybe it's you know i was just naive over people's ability to read a document, but it was, I was, I was surprised, 100%. What I think that would be interesting to see is a, a final tally of like the people who actually gave testimony versus just had their hands counted because like it, it, it's very easy to get people to show up to get their hands counted. It's a bigger lift to have people putting their names down and stuff. And that's how a lot of these meetings tend to be operated is creating like a hurdle for people to even show up to the thing and asking people to put identifying information that could then get them discriminated against for housing in the future is an even bigger ask. And I think the people definitely deserve to be heard out. And mm -hmm. I think it'd be a shame to have the weight of those people getting their family members to all show up and get voted or get counted as representative for what should be a very small ask and should get done, you know, mm -hmm. it's, to be disappointing when it happens i think but again we can't telling about what the this. city council does <laughs> we can't even yeah. pass this that's, that's just insane of course it is an election year so you got to think about that so that might be part of the reason why people file it but man we cannot even pass this what what is and to be clear like this was originally submitted like over a year ago yeah that's true fair point fair point was was picked up briefly as the resolution then we had we had that we we covered that earlier in the year and this this is it getting picked up as an ordinance mm -hmm. and an ordinance that doesn't need a public hearing and honestly it's so like it's so like minor and undemanding that it shouldn't need a public hearing either 
Yeah, that's that's something important to talk about. Someone was asking me, like, I don't understand, like they voted on it, like at the meeting, like, is that it? Um, I should, they, they were confused, um, like what happened after this. It should be stated that this is a citizen input hearing called, but it's not necessary to do it. It's just like an additional thing. And it all really stems from Kathy and Harris uh, back in Oregon and rules. I don't think we need to rehash it exactly why. Um, but this well, is just we should like definitely a rehash that this is her pulling, trying to make, basically make it clear who the silent majority is that is making this make this makes this too much to ask of her as the chair of ordinance and rules so yeah um tom do you want to do you want to do a quick timeline of this yeah sure so over a year ago what cdc said like hey this is a very simple ordinance we should try to do this in waltham uh they kept on talking about it and like working on it in the background but no city councilors picked it up uh until last december jonathan paz kind of like dipped his toe in by doing like a housing renters and landlords resolution, just like explore the concept. Um, even though like in housing rights notification ordinance had already been drafted by watch. And then fast forward a few months, last, it was either last March or April, there was the ordinance and rules committee where this resolution was finally discussed. And Jonathan Paz was like, hey, okay. So in the background, uh, watch CDC has actually drafted something that falls within the bounds of this resolution, something called the housing Tenants' rights notification ordinance is what Watch called it. This seems pretty cool, pretty reasonable. Uh, I'd like to have this talked about, um, brought to the council. Uh, so he, there was some back and forth in ordinance and rules where ordinance and rules, the committee members, let Jonathan Paz talk as an off committee counselor. And then Jonathan Paz said, hey, Watch CDC, who's been showing up to every city council meeting for the past few months, um, they are here uh, and they drafted this ordinance. Can one of them, can we have one of them talk just to like elaborate on what this ordinance would do? Um, and Kathy, Kathy Ann Harris said, no, there is not support for that on this counts, on this committee. Uh, go have a citizen input hearing for it, um, which is totally unnecessary because any city council or any committee can hear from off committee members. Um, it happens all the time with lawyers in ordinance and rules specifically. You know, pretty much any time you look at an ordinance and rules meeting, you'll be, hear them say, let's hear from an off committee member, uh, lawyer for this company that has something in front of us. Let's hear from you. Um, there is nothing in the city council rules that I'm aware of, and they have never presented anything in the city council rules that say that they can't do that for a non-lawyer. You know, The reason it didn't happen is because Safi and Harris said, I don't want to listen uh, to the person who helped design this ordinance. Uh, but here's a delay tactic. Why don't you do a whole citizen input hearing for it? Uh, and that kind of just snowballed. Um, did that necessarily determine that this is the course we would take? No, but that's what caused it to turn out like this. And now there's a citizen input hearing that just happened, but like, that's not the necessary part of the process. Uh, and so, you know, it still needs to go through the motions of, a, of, a, of an ordinance uh, in city council. And at the end of this uh, input hearing, it was moved to ordinance and rules. Um, and so it will be talked about in two weeks because the full city council is happening on Monday, is that correct? Am I, am I right in that? I believe, I believe we're hit, hitting the, so um, we're having council committee council next oh, week. Oh, yes. Then, it's the last Then it's, it's the, the summer meeting. session. I forgot. So, okay. So, so this gonna is going to be delayed like, longer regardless. Like, you know, that, yes. that, it's going to be delayed longer until yes, so, like the fall regardless. Let's, well, yeah, you know, it can. It's also possible that it's not. Because council committee council, it allows for very specific uh expediency uh for a lot of these things and some counselors use it for nefarious purposes a lot of these committees don't get recorded because it goes council committee council so local access doesn't really have time to like jump around and so there there's definitely been uh cases where things were either passed or not passed uh during a council committee council uh because of the expediency of it um and it depends on who's there and who's not. It's very interesting. So probably it'll just be delayed till September. Um, and 
maybe even longer to get a, get get past the election. Maybe that's how some some counselors will think. But totally, I could see it being filed uh, on Monday um, if that's what they were going to do. I forgot it was council committee council. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, that's uh, in summary basically all of it. Um, as was mentioned by James as well, there were a few landlords who did read the ordinance were like, hey, this is very undemanding and spoke in favor of it. That was really cool. Uh, but if you want to watch the whole thing, it is both on this YouTube channel under the live streams. We'll probably be clipping more of it in the near future. And then also it's available currently on the WCAC uh, government meetings website. Yes, yeah, so stay tuned on our YouTube channel for more clips from that meeting um, and other content from that.